Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. While it may not have the IRS of the current Mustang, the three-link solid axle found in the S197 is still a very competent package, especially for a solid axle car. With some good aftermarket support, it can handle even better. Today I have Angel from Petter Suspension here to help us with some shocks and struts for our 2005 GT. Angel, great to see you again. Tell us about what you brought with you here. Thanks for having me in the shop again. Yeah, these are our uh, big bore shocks for the uh, S197, and as you said, the car is a very competent platform if you address if you the, add the right stuff Exactly that. Yeah. And these guys, being a bigger bore shock, provide another level of control without the harshness normally associated okay. with, a, with a typical spring and shock um, upgrade. And these are, are designed out of the box to work with either the factory shocks, if you, or springs rather, if you want to go that way, or our own uh, lowering springs, or yeah. any other lowering springs for that matter. And direct replacement, V6, GT, works Covers on all, all of all the bases, yeah. Up to including GT500. And GT500 mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Okay, and is it recommended to use it as a package? Can you use them separately? No, I mean, a lot of these are sold as, as standalone, just, you know, upgrades for the, for the OE shocks, mm -hmm. but um, to really put it all together as the best package, I would recommend lowering springs to go along Do with the it. whole package yeah, together. Exactly. And 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 ours specifically are gonna be bow for these. So that that would be selfishly my uh my, my my recommendation. Okay, and do you have a sway bar package? I mean you have other things as well for the S197? We package? certainly do, yeah. We have sway bars as well as uh, a few links and things like that to address okay. some of the other issues. We'll look at that stuff in the future, but let's get started with the shocks and struts. For this installation they lift or a jack and jack stands, three eighth ratchet, five sixteenth socket, ten millimeter socket, thirteen millimeter socket. 14 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, torque wrench, 18 millimeter wrench, clip removal tool, half inch impact or half inch ratchet, spring compressor, and safety glasses. All right, so this car already has the Petters lowering springs. Now we're gonna make it ride even better and perform even better by adding the shocks and struts. The first step is to loosen the four bolts on the strut mount. Now here you wanna remove three of them and just loosen the fourth. Okay, now we're gonna move down to the wheel wall and we're gonna start by removing the sway bar. Okay, with the sway bar off, now we're gonna move the brake standoff bolt and then the little clip in the back for the ABS line. Here, with everything out of the way, now we can remove the two bolts that hold the spindle to the strut. At this point, you should be able to remove the bolts by hand. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the final nut up top here so Angel can remove the assembly. All right, so now we're going to compress the spring so we can remove it from our strut assembly and then install our petter strut. Now, since this is an aftermarket spring already and it's a lowering spring, you don't have to compress it too much. And now remove the strut nut to remove the strut mount. Now, we, we've taken the, uh, the old boots off of the OE struts and we're going to move those over to our petter strut. Again, make sure everything is seated. All right, now we can release tension on the spring compressor. You'll notice on the top of the strut mount there's an arrow and a cutout. That arrow and cutout is going to face outward towards the fender when you reinstall the assembly. All right, so Angel's going to put the assembly up into place. I'm going to install the nuts on the strut tower. And just get these started. You don't want to tighten them down just yet. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the spindle to the strut using the factory hardware. Usually it's easier to get the bottom one in first. We install the factory retaining nuts and tighten them down. Okay, now we can replace the brake standoff bolt and clip the ABS line back on. All right, now we can reconnect the sway bar. Okay, now we're gonna tighten these bolts down and torque them to 40 foot pounds. Okay, 
it. Repeat the process on the other side, and then we can move on to the rear shocks. We're going to begin the shock installation now in the trunk by removing the nut that's located behind this panel here. You want to do one side at a time. It doesn't matter which side you start with. Okay, now we're going to support the rear. So we can drop down the sway bar and then remove the bolt for the shock. And now we can remove the shock. Okay, and then reverse the process now to install our new Petter shock. Okay, we're gonna reinstall the sway bar now. You just put the bolts in hand tight. We're doing this to support the rear while we go back up top. And don't tighten them down, just a couple threads to get them started. All right, the shocks in place are ready to install the upper bushing and the mount itself. Now, if it doesn't come up far enough, you may have to go underneath the car and just jack the rear up to get the stud all the way through. Okay, now you put the cover back into place, then repeat the process on the other side, and your installation's finished. Angel, thanks again for coming out. You know, the spring's got the car sitting right, but the shocks and struts are definitely going to add to the performance of the car, make it a lot more fun to drive. You know, wheels and tires should definitely be in order in this car in the future, but it'll make it a lot more fun car overall. As far as the installation goes, it's straightforward shocks and struts. Figure about two hours, be back on the road in no time.